Okay, now I have a very weird sort of unit. This is actually a TXCA50. It's a cassette player with an amplifier. So it's kind of like a receiver, but there's no tuner in it. There's just a tape deck and an amp. It's got this sort of old setup with a center volume control with a balance control on the outside here. It's a center right like indentation on that. And then the front bit here is the volume. Dolby noise reduction, mic mixing, phono tuner and auxiliary, and then source tape, microphone inputs. So I've got here yeah, like a twin pot, inner and outer pot ring here for much like a car radio for treble and bass. And we've got record left and right levels. You can move them together or not. It's actually got metal, chrome, and normal tape. Don't know why it's got a pause light there as well as a record. Got a um, VU meter here, might only be for tape record, but it could also be for the amp. And yeah, soft touch operation cassette, although those buttons seem to stick in, which isn't a good sign with a soft touch. Mm, yeah, it's not, not the best, got quite a bit of dirt and dust in it. And yeah, power's a little crunchy. Eject doesn't seem to. Oh, here it goes. And yeah, cobwebs in there. So. Yeah, quite a good, decent, solid old TAC, TAC tape deck in there. It's one of the early ones, even got TAC label on the head. Or TAC erase and TAC play head by the look of it. So, this little door should, I assume, slide off. There we go. So, we can move that. That allows us to see all our stuff in there. We've got TAC record play head. Yeah, you could do with a clean and a bit of dust and muck in there. Oops. Clean some of that filth out of there. But, um, oh yeah, the belt's knackered in this but Look at it, I can see the, the main belt stuck to the capstan. So, yeah, that's just probably goo almost. Yeah, it's, it is stretching a bit, but yeah, that, this main belt here uh, is horrible. <laughs> yeah, that's just that's completely stuffed. And it's actually yeah, starting to stick. Lucky it hasn't turned completely to goo. Yeah, this belt's the same. I don't know if you can see that stretching as it's actually stuck to the pulley and part of it's following it around. Yeah, that's almost turned to goo. Oh, yeah, there, it's just, oh, yeah, it's, it's like licorice or something. Oh, yeah, just horrible. Thankfully, it's not completely gone to the black tar type stuff, but it's very close. So this has been caught just in the nick of time before the belt's turned to complete muck. Yeah, they're all, all completely had their day. Probably haven't been used for 20, 30 years. So we've got a tape deck here. Very heavy power transformer, so this thing's probably got a decent wattage output. That's our amp board, obviously. I can see aluminium around it, so that's our heat sink. There's a big STK441 stereo amp down in there. Filter cap, fuse. So at the back of this thing, we've basically just got our mains in. Speaker out, phono tuner, auxiliary and tape out, ground for our phono. Uh, I guess probably our it's that input select panel, yeah. There's a LED board down there, so it looks like the driver chips may be up there. So they're one of the sort of 80 surface mount type LEDs with a plastic panel over it. And just see yeah, our tape, I can see a couple of Dolby chips there. NE646s with a little Dolby symbol on them. Record play switch, some bias oscillators, a race oscillator, whatever down there. And I guess the rest of this is probably just, well, that's probably our preamp and tones up there. Yeah, that's where our wires from our back sockets go to. I guess we might as well just plug this in for a quick check. I think the amp is meant to work on this. And I can be in no doubt that the tape deck's not going to work. So we've got some power here. Sounds like the motor's at least trying to turn. Oh yeah, she's running. Just always be careful of these mains power switches. This one's been very well done with a bit of plastic around it, but often there's just completely live 
and bare 240 volts there so always be wary of these audio audio equipment is often the most dangerous stuff to work on because you're not you think it's all low voltage but there'll be some bare terminals occasionally so it looks like this motor that's even got TAC on the motor there that's how how old this is made in Japan and I don't have any real lights and we've got a little bit of the so that might be an output level meter. I just saw a couple of LEDs come up. Record, let's turn our volume down. Balance in the middle. Tone in the middle. Let's take the muck out of there. Okay. So again, being careful not to touch anything that might be live. We'll check the speaker outputs for DC. Point two six five volts, which is fine, and point one, point two volts here yeah, should should be okay. So we'll turn that off, and we'll hook up with some speakers. Yeah, bit of a pop there, so something charged up in there. Channel. And we'll plug our CD player in to the tuner input. So this, a, so this is a, a general. VU meter for record level, I assume, and for the amplifier output. But it sounds like that's all working. Yeah, balance is pretty scratchy. So I can get into the pot. Turn the power off for safety. Belt stuck everywhere now. I can get to the the pot's upside down, so I'll squirt some contact or switch clean a lubricant into there, in through the top. We should get it down inside the pot nicely. Yeah, it's driven out the bottom, so that's a good sign. A little bit of um, voltage in there somewhere. This is completely off even at the power point, but if I turn it up to full volume, we're getting a little bit of distorted sound there. So I'll turn that right back down. Power's on. Yep, that all seems okay. Other inputs here. Auxiliary phono. Yeah, distorted as you'd expect. And that's the tape out, so we don't have to worry about that. So I'm going to have to pull the tape deck to bits in this one and remove it from the case. Looks like it shouldn't be too hard to get out. Look at the front panel will have to come off. I'm not sure if I've got belts of those sort of lengths, so I might even have to get some belts. It's got a yeah, counter belt, belt from the uh, take-up reel across to a little pulley here which may have some sort of auto stop on it. Yeah, this weird mechanism here I think is auto stop. And another belt going to the... They're actually almost usable. Going to the counter on the front. There's this little belt I just took off. Which again, I'm not quite sure what that goes to there. Uh, there's another a longer... Yeah, that goes around the capstan. And this is probably something to do with the... Uh, no, oh, there's an idler. 
unless there's an idler directly off the capstan. I'm not sure what this other belt does. That just, that just feeds a pulley which feeds this other belt. I forget what those mechanisms do. But we'll have a look at that later. And there's a flat capstan belt as well. So that's one, two, three, four, five belts in this thing. Plus a rubber idler which thankfully looks to be intact but it's got some weird white stuff on it. I'm not sure what that is whether that's the rubber deteriorating but I can't see any cracks in it. But hopefully that'll still be working. And yeah we've got got a mechanism here running off there's a gear on the front of the capstan which runs a big gear down the bottom of the mechanism which will be the, the electronic uh, functions in this deck so it might be a good deck actually to have a look at the electronic function one the soft touch because it basically needs I don't know if there's a solenoid in this one but it needs a system to yeah there is I think or is there? there's a wire but anyway it needs some sort of mechanical system to to lift the deck up put the heads into play as well as move the idler around between rewind and fast forward and all that sort of thing so whereas you'd normally press all these plates and slide them with a, a mechanical button on the front or on the top on the deck these actually have a gear that rotates off the capstan and that'll actually if I turn the power off uh, this belt's a bit gooey but yeah I'm not sure if I can actually get it to engage that's the other problem there's usually a solenoid or some other there's a lamp a switch, a motor, heads I think that's another switch so I'm not sure what trig is this to to operate but anyway we'll have to have a look at that maybe in another video